in relation to the pandemic unemployment payment, a support that has been absolutely vital to thousands of workers and families over the last 18 months. We know that next UP is due to be cut by 50 euro and as well as that over 28,000 workers are going to be moved on to job seekers payments. A lot of them will see their income. I'm asking Minister Humphreys today to do the right thing, to come out after that cabinet meeting and to tell workers that they will not see their incomes cut next week. The live entertainment sector is expected to get a roadmap, a reopening at long last next week. But we know for those workers, they will be going back to work at reduced capacity. We cannot have a situation where workers are just getting back on their feet Tuesday. In a lot of cases, their only income support is going to be cut. We also know, and this has been particularly apparent in rural areas where pubs and restaurants to reopen, their workers have remained on the PUP. They did not want to have to use or enforce the digital COVID cert for indoor dining. And so all of those work not be cut until their sector reopens. So we're making this plea to Minister Humphreys to do the right thing by these workers this afternoon. Thank you. Lots of people, that means lots of people will return to work. Is it not for the natural next, not the next natural step? for them these, for these uh, pendants to be cut down or tapered off? Well, obviously we haven't seen the, the plans yet, but we know what they're looking at in relation to Monday is actually now Minister Martin has repeatedly said it has to be at least at 80% in order for it to be viable. So what we have is a situation where, work, where workers in second payment who will not be working as normal from Monday will see their incomes cut. And for young people in particular, those aged 18 to 24, they, so many on less than a hundred euro a week moving forward. If a sector is closed or if a worker cannot work due to COVID, they should be entitled to that pandemic unemployment job seekers. And so they should not be treated as job seekers. And there is a lot of implications when it comes to accepting and receiving a job seekers payment. And I would also say as well, that the Minister has been very clear repeatedly in saying there will be no cliff edge. We know that the bulk, if not all, restrictions will be lifted by October 22nd. So why can the six weeks just to get those sectors reopened and then look at it? We'd said all along the PUP should remain at current rates. It should be reviewed at the end of every quarter. That, and that would actually be a really good time to look at this in light of what will be announced today. OK, yeah, just very quickly, I just want to say a, a few words on the uh, the government's plan that will be announced today on, on reopening uh, the remaining elements of the economy. As we've been looking for a plan for the last number of weeks and we very much hope that this plan today will be holistic and that will set out in very clear terms exactly what restrictions will be eased and when. As Claire has pointed out, there can't be a cliff edge for worker. Live entertainment sector opens on the 6th of, of September. It's going to take a few weeks, if not months, for those uh, workers to see full wage levels again. So there can't be a cliff edge and they have to be properly supported. I also want to just make a number of remarks in relation to uh, the sacrifices that people made over the last 18 months and more. And I think because of those sacrifices and, and because of the fact that the vast, vast majority of citizens abided by the public health advice and, and abided by the public health measures, as well as the phenomenal uptake in, in the vaccine rollout, that we're almost at 90% of the adult population having been vaccinated, has put us now in this very, very strong position to be able to ease restrictions. And I think credit has to go to communities, to individuals, to uh, the entire society, and also those on the front line, most especially in healthcare. Uh, they deserve tremendous credit. Uh, so obviously we, we look forward to what's been announced uh, today and we, we will anticipate and wait and see what, what the government will uh, announce. The, the government also needs to, while they present a plan for reopening, uh, also put in place a plan for youth unemployment. They have to put a focus on housing, so we're, we're, again we're hearing that there will be a plan for housing. It has to be one that delivers. Uh, we need to see a plan to invest in our healthcare services because we are already seeing overcrowding coming back again in many of our acute hospitals. We know that there's huge capacity issues, but we e equally we know that there is a tsunami of missed care coming at the healthcare services. And we've launched proposals in relation to housing. I launched plans 
a number of months ago in relation to what's needed for the health services. And Clare today has launched proposals and again a few weeks ago in relation to the PUP payments and we need to see all of those issues worked into the government's uh, plan as well because while we ease restrictions and that's very welcome we also need to deal with all of these issues as well. David what's your view on the government's proposal that they can have um, outdoor capacity of up to 75 percent for fully vaccinated people? What's your view on that? Because I know your colleagues in the north have been picking shallow ways to express some um, reservation about using COVID certificates to allow um, to be sort of you know, the for well, I think in the first instance we'll have to wait and see what the public health advice will be. And we've always said that public health advice is very important when easing restrictions and when responding to COVID. We haven't seen what that updated public health advice is, but I have heard the CMO and others in effort say that if we can achieve 90% of the adult population vaccinated, we are in a very, very strong position to reopen. And I would hope and hope that that reopening would be for everybody. If it is the case that the public health officials feel that some infection control measures need to be in place uh, for those who they say are unvaccinated or who are unvaccinated, then we believe the testing should also be on the table as an opportunity as well. So if, if you look at the logic of the COVID certs, that are being used for travel. Uh, it's your COVID status, not just your vac vaccine status. So if you have uh, the antibodies in your system, you can travel. If you have a negative COVID test, you can travel. And if you have a uh, 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 if you have the vaccine proof, you can travel and you can go to a concert anywhere in Europe. So I think that we need to use the same logic and, and, and ensure then that when we do reopen, it is for everybody. And obviously we have to keep people safe. And obviously I would appeal to people to get vaccinated for those who have not been vaccinated. Uh, but I think there are measures that we can put in place, infection control measures, including testing, uh, that can be used to ensure then that when we do reopen, that it is a reopening for everybody. But let's wait and see what's in the government plan and let's wait and see what the public health advice will be uh, on that particular measure. And part of the government's plan is suggesting that the, the vast majority of restrictions will come down and run to the latter part of October. Do you think that's too soon? Well, if, if it's in, in tune with the public health advice, I don't. Uh, I think there will be an element of, of some measures to remain in place for some time to come. Uh, but the vast, vast majority of the restrictions, uh, we all hope, will come to an end. Uh, obviously, all of this can be reviewed if the public health emergency changes, but we are in a very strong position. And I go back to what I said earlier. The reason why we in this state are now in a really powerful position to be able to substantially ease restrictions is down to two things. One, that uh, the people have abided by public health restrictions. Most of the people, most of the time, which ha has put us right through this pandemic in a very strong position. But equally, the vaccine uptake has been phenomenal. And I remember being on this plinth and responding to questions from journalists ever before a single vaccine came. And there was a concern, indeed a response to opinion polls, that there would be high levels of vaccine hesitancy, that it would be difficult to get people to get the vaccine and take the vaccine. That hasn't been the case. So given that we are uh, in that position of almost 90% of the adult population vaccinated, and possibly that will be even more than that by the time we get to October, then I think that you know, we can uh, legitimately and fairly see those restrictions eased. And I think that will be uh, the bonus that people deserve uh, for, uh, for doing what was necessary. And, and then from there on in, I think there will be an element of personal responsibility that people will have to uh, make decisions themselves on what they want to do and where they want to go. And if they feel it isn't safe for them, then obviously they shouldn't do so. But we do need to see the economy reopened and society get back to normal. So I think if that is the time frame, I think it's a reasonable one if it's underpinned by the public health advice. But we'll have to wait and see what comes out of, uh, out of Cabinet today.